percent fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. Big Y, your family market is proud to be the broadcast booth sponsor of the Yukon Radio Network. Whether it's a meal for two or setting up a feast for the whole team, make sure to visit your local Big Y for it all. Grab some grinders, a party-sized pizza, even sushi and sandwiches. Big Y has all the essentials to satisfy even the hungriest crew. I'm iHeartMedia's Renee Danino, reminding you that it all starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. Play-by-play coverage of UConn men's basketball is presented all season long by Key Bank, the exclusive retail bank of UConn men's basketball. No one gets you closer to the game than Sirius XM College Sports Radio. Tune in for news, talk, and analysis from off-season, regular season, post-season. We'll get your team covered anywhere you go. Get to a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash College Sports Radio 2023. Well, these teams having a hard time from three-point range. Northwestern is 0 for 5. UConn 0 for 4. Their top three-point shooter, Cam Spencer, hasn't taken one yet. He's got four points in the game. Cam's brother played at Northwestern. Oh, yeah, we, we haven't talked too much about Northwestern, but. Well, his brother was national. His brother was national player of the year in lacrosse. And then he went on to play one year at Northwestern when he averaged 10 points a game. And he just joined the Golden State Warriors. So now he's playing with Steph Curry. Uh, you kind of limp out a ball to our right. And it- yeah. Four blocks, one shy of his career high. We still have 6.40 to go first half. He hands it off to Newton, drives down the lane, trying to drop it to Klingon. Klingon gets fouled before the shot. They both got in there deep. I think they had a little... Tremendous of late. He assisted on back-to-back UConn hoops, and he had the drive to the hoop. And here he made a pass across the lane from the right to the left, about five feet out to Klingon. They have really done a good job getting touches for Klingon in this game. And Donovan at the other end's blocked four shots. He's been great. And on the free throw line, he makes it. In fact, we were talking to his dad on the off day, and he, he said the biggest topic of conversation in our house, free throw shooting. <laughs> And I said, that, that must be interesting on the breakfast table when you bring that up to Donovan. Klingon's second one is good. He's improving, that's for sure. He's up uh, over 60% in the Big East play and getting close to 60% overall Lead, after two makes. Leading scorer now at 10 points. He's been UConn's high scorer three of the last four games coming in. 26-10, to 10, UConn with Lulee. Here's Langborg. He attacks the right side. Gives to Martinelli deep in the corner. Martinelli throws him an air ball. Klingon's got another rebound. Hands it off to Newton. Newton runs to the front court on the left sideline. He pulls up, calls a play. The R is set to check back in. Castle has the top of the arc. He's guarded there by Barnheiser. Gives it up on the left wing to Newton at the hash right in front of Chris Collins. Newton into the paint. Nowhere to go. Back out front to Spencer for three. Spencer way short. Out of bounds, and Caravan can't chase it down. It'll be Northwest basketball, Northwestern basketball. Interesting physical battle between Luke Hunger at 6'10 and Donovan Klingon. Hunger was banging Klingon several times in that possession off the ball. See what that develops into. This Northwestern team has some pretty good wins this year. Illinois, they got Purdue all at home. Michigan State. Here's Bowie on a stop-and-go move on the right sideline. Powell on extended. He attacks Diara. Ducks underneath and missed the shot. Klingon got another rebound. Outlets to Spencer. Spencer runs left. Gives to Caravan for three. In and out. And rebounded by Hunger. UConn still without a three-point field goal. But leading by 16 with 5.20 to go here in the first. Here's Bowie on a pick and roll to Hunger. He attacks Klingon and able to lay it in. Uh, he just powered his way into Donovan that time. Hunger with a nice shot. And it's 26-12. UConn leads with five minutes to go in the first half. All right, Newton makes the call. 
He stands between the ring, straight on the basket. Looks to go left to Spencer. Spencer gets it. Now hands over to Klingon at the top of the key. Klingon with a hand up to Diara. Diara behind the screen of Klingon. Diara into the paint. Nowhere to go. And a bounce pass to Newton who laid it in off the back door. Wow. What vision by Diara. And UConn with that two-pointer leads 28-12. to 12. That is their 10th assist in the ballgame on 12 baskets. Here's Bowie front court left. Guarded by Diara, starts to his right. Picked up by Caravan on the switch, but Barnheiser's open. Bowie got it to him, but he missed the shot. And Klingon's there again. Nine for the big man. Here's Newton. Attacks the basket right. Steps back behind the arc for three. It's no good. Rebounded by Klingon. Powers inside and a left hand. And Klingon scores. 30-12. to 12. Kling Kong is putting out a show. 12-10 and 10 already. A double-double. Zach Eady-like. Edie did that earlier today. As Purdue scored over 100 to move on to the second round. Here's Martinelli into the paint. Puts up a floater. Drops it in off the front rim. Aggressive shot. And he's able to get it to go. Martinelli now has six. He leads the way for Northwestern. DR front court right. 340 to go in the first. Fires it out front to Newton. Gets a handoff. Starts to his right. Diara gives to Klingon and gets it back. Stands at the top of the key now. Holds over his head. High post handoff is Klingon. Klingon with the ball over his head. Spins back. Gives to Spencer. Spencer can't get his shot off. He fires in the right corner to DR for three. And Hassan in and out. Rebounded by Barnheiser. UConn 0 for on the game from three. Here's Bowie on a drive by Diara. Shoves him away. And Klingon blocks the attempt again. That's five on the outlet. Newton. Newton front court Caravan. Caravan now gives to Spencer. He thinks about shooting a three, and he buries it. And Spencer and the Huskies finally break through after eight straight misses. 33 to 14. Three minutes to go in the first. Big Husky lead. Barnheiser front court left. Step back three by Barnheiser. Hard off the glass. Clinging at another board. I'll let Newton. One pass on a touch to Diara. And he laid it in. <laughs> the junkyard dog. A Newton and a one touch pass. And UConn is roaring right now. The Huskies have the bark and they got the bite and they lead 35 to 14. 240 to go in the first. The top orthopedic specialist in the region. Now in your community, with the big asso- orthopedic associates of Hartford. Now open at South Windsor at 25 Buckland Road near Evergreen Walk. Make your move. Learn more at oahct.com. The Huskies, the first 20-point lead of the ball game, 35-14, 240 remaining in the first. For Brown Paint, Harrison Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center, conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. We bleed blue. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. Statication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council.
The Dunk King's iced coffee with a French vanilla swirl, vanilla shot, sweet cold foam, and cinnamon sugar topping. Order the whole Dunk King's menu on the app for the Dunk King's iced coffee or pop into your local Dunk King. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Well, they, they flipped the script a little, Wayne. I mean, college hoop these days, you fire it up from distance. You've gone this nine in a row before they made one. So they've got ten fast break points. That's been impressive. Yeah, the Huskies one for nine from three, and the three that they made was by Spencer after the fifth block by Klingon, who has been phenomenal. Twelve points, 11 rebounds in the first half, five of six shooting. And this last time, they got another fast break basket. Hassan Diara finishing it off on the fourth assist by Tristan Newton. Hassan could almost walk to this building from home. He, he lives in Queens up by LaGuardia Airport. He just goes to the free throw line. And he makes the free throw. So Diara off the bench. He has been a huge boost off the bench all season long. He's got three now, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. He's hit 11 of his last 12 free throws. All right, Boo Boo, meanwhile, 0 for 6 in the game, being guarded by Castle right now on the left wing. He fires it right as they go to their bench, and Justin Mullins is in the game. And now Martinelli trying to post up Caravan on the baseline, and uh, flips his shot up on a reverse and does not catch iron, and the board is Castle's. Castle on front court right on the left wing. Behind the screen of Samson Johnson, backs away and looks over the defense, being guarded by Justin Mullins, the sophomore forward. And now Castle fires it right to Spencer. He starts back to his left, hands it over to Johnson. They go into a weave. DR now back to Hat Castle. Castle on the right wing, fires to Spencer, who starts to his left, can't get a shot up. They're down to three, got to get something. They get it to DR. He four, fires it up. It's an air ball and a shot clock violation. By the Huskies. That's just UConn's third turnover. They had two early in the game as they continue to take great care of the ball. Castle was running the point there with Newton on the bench. So the Huskies with a turnover. Ran out of time, and here's Bowie walking across the timeline. Got Castle in his face. That can't be a nice prospect. (laughs) Steph Castle, as a freshman, has been an excellent defender. He gives up the dribble, fires it right to Langborg. Now out front, it's Preston. Preston with the ball over his head. He hands up to Bowie, who starts to his right. Tries to blow by Castle. Puts him a wild shot. No good. And a foul is called on Castle. And there'll be two free throws coming here. As Bowie forced the action, there was contact. And now Castle has his second foul. Picked up one very early, and both fouls have been while guarding the career-scoring leader at Northwestern, Boo Bowie. And Steph is saying, I got hit in the chops by Bowie on the drive. I don't think there's any blood yet, but you know when you get hit like that, it really it gets you a little foggy, and Castle's kind of wandering around, and free throw by Bowie's in. He's He's good. That's his first point of the game. He's played 19 minutes, missed six field goal attempts, two threes, finally gets a free throw to go. He's a good free throw shooter, 85% of the season. Boo Bowie is actually Daniel Richard Bowie. He has a hamburger named after him at a hamburger stand in Chicago, and it has an onion ring on the top, the zero, because he's number zero. That's the kind of coverage you get from Wayne Norman in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Dan Hurley said he's 24 years old. I said, wow. (laughs) Wow. Uh, that's one of the older guys in college basketball, Boo Booey. All right, here's Caravan with a three from the top of the arc, and he knocks it down. Alex came off a screen and turned and squared his shoulders and drilled it. UConn's got two from long range now, and they lead it 39-16. to 16. He had gone one for ten from three in the NCAAs until that. All right, Bowie gives it to Martinelli, who tries to drive it into the paint on Caravan. Spins one way, spins the other way. A little hook shot goes in. And Nick Martinelli, a pretty good player, averages nine. And Martinelli now has eight in the first half, 39-18. to 18. Uh, They inbound it to Newton, who's trying to save as much time as possible. He finally picks it up back in the backcourt, walks it up to the front court. As UConn has a differential of one second between the game clock and the shot clock, and they're going to use up as much time as they can right here. As Newton... Holes at the timeline. Now they're down to 10 seconds to shoot. Starts to his left in the left sideline. Back to his right of a screen by Samson Johnson. Back to his left to Diara. Can't get a shot off. Diara dives inside. Goes to the left hand and he got fouled. With 1.1 left in the half and .4 seconds left, Hassan 
drove on the left side of the lane and got hit. And he'll get two free throws. I found that to be intriguing in the sense that when you're trying for a buzzer beater, do you put Hassan Diara as your number <laughs> one option? But that's how it worked out. And I think that all started with Tristan Newton reading the play the right way. And then Hassan got the ball baseline left and attacked that baseline. And he ended up drawing the foul, drawing the foul on Hunger. And that's the second foul on the 6'10 sophomore. And a high arcing free throw is good by Hassan. Saw him in the fitness center yesterday on the off day doing a lot of stretching. Trying to get loose you know, before they did their practice session uh, on the off day they, they went hard for 90 minutes here at the Barclays Center and then a little shoot around today and Diara's second one is no good and that'll end the half. UConn with a strong first half 40 to 18 to lead 53 percent shooting running the break well with 11 points 11-0 there and 12 points in the paint by the Huskies a 12, uh, I'm sorry, 28 to 12 advantage in a paint for UConn and a 40 to 18 advantage. So stay with us. The Key Bank Halftime Report with Zach Winfield coming up next. UConn 40 and Northwestern 18. And we're presented by Brown, Pandaris, and Scott. This is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to LazFly Off Airport Parking, located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks. They have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. LazFly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time, every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. LazFly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question, are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. Twenty minutes are in the books. This is the Key Bank halftime report. Key Bank is the exclusive retail bank of UConn men's basketball. Coming up, we'll recap the first half and check scores from across the country. Now, let's go to the Learfield Network Studios. Welcome to the Key Bank halftime report. UConn enters the break ahead of Northwestern, forty to eighteen. Zach Linfield with you from the Learfield. Network Studios. Current scores from across the tournament in the West region. Just one game playing along right now. The four seed Alabama holds a 42-33 lead over a Cinderella in this tournament. That's 12th seed at Grand Canyon at Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena in Spokane. Mark Sears leading the way for the Tide with 15 points. Still to come tonight and yet to tip the number two overall seed Houston dominated Longwood to earn a spot in the round of 32. They will meet the nine seed Texas A&M and the Aggies await for an 840 tip off. Texas A&M an offensive explosion against Nebraska on Friday night. They dumped in 98 points, 58 of those coming in the first half and they'll be challenged by Houston's top ranked defense. Again, the tip off scheduled for about 8.40 p.m. They will follow, actually just wrapped up, the six-seed Clemson has upset the three-seed Baylor 72 
to 64. Baylor tied it at that total, 64 all, but Clemson rattled off the final seven, eight, that's math, eight points of the game, and the Tigers will find their way to the Sweet 16. Finally, pull out your highlighters, as I mentioned in the pregame, for approximately 940 when the five seed in our region, San Diego State, tangles with the 13 seed Yale in the East out in Washington. Both teams eked by in the round of 64. San Diego State against UAB and Yale. They shocked the four seed from the SEC. Auburn head coach of the Huskies, Dan Hurley, has emphasized that Stores is the basketball capital of the world. But with the brand of basketball being played across the state of Connecticut, he's got nothing but great things to say about Yale's program and their head man, James Jones. Me and James, you know, been texting, you know, since a couple weeks ago and, and uh, you know, his, his win in, uh, in the conference tournament there, incredible. Uh, his leadership, his coaching, you know, he's one of the best out there, uh, one of the most underrated coaches in the country and, uh, you know, just a total beast. And, um, and uh, it, it's just great. Uh, it's great for Connecticut. It, it, it's great for the state. You know, we, we, I know we say stores Connecticut, you know, is, is the basketball capital world and, and we don't run from that. But, you know, maybe just the state of Connecticut kind of feels like the basketball capital of the world. Maybe we just we add that, you know, stores into into New Haven. You know, maybe we stretch that a little bit right now. On the other hand, head coach of San Diego State, Brian Dutcher, said the Aztecs are not losing another game in this tournament. Either San Diego State or Yale will meet the winner of our game in the Sweet 16. Fun implications either way if UConn's able to hold on. San Diego State moves on. It's a rematch of last year's national championship. And if Yale can continue their role as a potential Cinderella team, two Connecticut teams will meet in Boston next week. Let's hit the final scores quickly from earlier today. Four seed Duke shot the lights out from beyond the arc, especially freshman Jared McCain. 93-55, to the four seed Duke in the south beats the 12 seed James Madison. That was at the Barclays Center right before our game. And top seeded Purdue in the Midwest region in Indianapolis. They will play in Detroit in the Sweet 16. 106 to 67 winners over the 8 seed Utah State. Most points scored in NCAA tournament history for Purdue. Finally from the Big East, two seeded Marquette. They held off a really tough bu- uh, Buffs team out of Colorado. The 10 seed in the South, 81 to 77. Well, Wayne Norman's got some sound bites coming for you next on the Key Bank Halftime Report from Brown Payne Darius and Scott. UConn leads it 40 to 18 over the Northwestern Wildcats from the Big Ten at halftime in Brooklyn. You're dialed into UConn Hoops from Learfield. Calling all movers and shakers, those cranking around on crutches, the high heeled, the ready to be healed, the always on your feet. We are masters of mobility, healers of joints, muscles, bones. What moves you moves us. We are Yukon Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, where we practice what we teach. Here, academic medicine, research, and clinical care unite as one relentless power. Because together, anything is possible. Visit us at health.yukon.edu. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center, conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Keeping you ahead of severe weather is the most important thing we do. Hi, I'm Channel 3 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. And I'm meteorologist Scott Haney. We're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First alert weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible. Simply put, when we know, you know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and to keep your family safe. This is why we first alert. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync Sync My my Game. game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com.
Halftime in Brooklyn, UConn leading Northwestern 40-18. to You may recall in Friday's game against Stetson, UConn jumped out to a 40-16 to lead, and that was with time left in the first half. UConn coach Dan Hurley eats eight M&M candies before every game. He discards the colors of opponents. He's been doing this for years. So, for example, no green ones on Friday before UConn played Stetson. Stetson's color is green. And that means no purple M&Ms before tonight's game with Northwestern. But, oh, Coach Hurley has a lot more superstitions. I mean, you know about the draws, right? Um, the, the draws, the underwear. You know, my wife's, um, you know, she was churning the hand hand washer last night. Uh, and then when I left this morning, they were hanging. And they, they looked droopy. Um, but she had the, the hair dryer on the hot, and she had a concoction set up to dry them. The socks got holes in them because I'm running the same socks. And then I got this, um, I've been running back with the same suit. See, because the problem, the reason why we lost to New Mexico State, throw out the COVID NCAA tournament, that whole thing, man, that, uh, that Maryland loss, uh, but the, the New Mexico State game, I got cute, and I tried to wear, like, a, a, nice, a nice blazer and, and some, some really, like, nice shoes. And, and I didn't wear the same blue suits that I was wearing at Roadie when we beat Creighton and played Oregon in that great game and then beat Trey Young in Oklahoma and then lost that Duke game. When I was having success in the tournament, I was just wearing that plain blue suit and that same dress shirt. I broke it back out last March, and... Um, that thing's at the dry cleaner. I'm going to wear that uh, until somebody takes me out. <laughs> shoes are brutal. Wait till you, the brown shoes that would barely have a sole left. <laughs> Through the coaching, I think, as a player, you don't even, you know, you just get out there and you just go hoop. But sometimes you're just in the back of the locker room by yourself a lot. Everyone else is out there, and it's just you and your thoughts and... You know, you're not going to turn the TV on, so now, like, your mind is racing. So a lot of kind of the superstition things, the M&Ms and, you know, the clothes, it's almost like you're putting on armor. It's, it's almost like watching Rafa Nadal before he serves. You know, he goes through this, like, weird process of things that settles him before he serves the ball. It just kind of takes my mind off of, um, uh, away from thinking about all the bad things that could happen over the course of the next couple hours. What an amazing cut from Coach Dan Hurley. He reverence his wife. Andrea is over there right now, standing right behind the UConn bench. One reason why UConn has this 40-18 lead is they've done a great job on Boo Booey. He's the career scoring leader for Northwestern. He averages 20 points a game in conference games. He's 0 for 6 from the floor. A lot of that is because of the great defense played by Steph Castle. He went to Gould Academy in Maine. And, by the way, Gould Academy nickname is the Huskies, but he's also from Albany, and Boo Booey knows 2003 national champion Andre Jackson of UConn, who's also a guy that went to school in Albany, very well. Andre Jackson, I grew up with him. Uh, he's like a brother to me. You know, literally since the second grade, we've, we've grown up and, and been hanging out with each other ever since, and now he's actually in Milwaukee, and I go up about an hour and 15 minutes. And I go up, uh, you know, like once every other weekend or so, you know, catch a game if I can or, or just go chill with him, say what's up. He, re- he reached out to me uh, before the tournament had started and he was like, you know, you got to be FAU so I can get past and try to make it to the UConn game. So I know that he told me he was going to try to be at the game. Uh, hopefully he can make it. Uh, he definitely had ma- mentioned that to me before. It'll be tough for Andre Jackson to beat this game as the Bucks have a game in Milwaukee tonight against Oklahoma City. So far, A.J. has not played. And we tried giving you the cut earlier from Cam Spencer of UConn, whose brother, Pat, was a great lacrosse player, National Player of the Year at Loyola. And then he went on to play one year at Northwestern, the team UConn is playing tonight. So we'll see if we can get Cam talking about that. Uh, I have talked to him, yeah. We, we haven't talked too much about Northwestern, but obviously it's uh, coming full circle to, to play them in, in the tournament. Um, but, you know, he, we were really appreciative of, you know, his one year at Northwestern. And, um, you know, he I know he'll be watching from uh, California, but, yeah, I think he's rooting for UConn tomorrow. That's UConn's Camp Spencer. The Huskies lead Northwestern 40-18. to 18. We'll come give some halftime stats. After this, from Brown, Panderas, and Scott, this UConn basketball on Learfield. 
Power Station Events is the official production partner of the Yukon Huskies. The ultimate one-stop source featuring audio, video, lighting, staging, talented DJs and musicians, photography and videography, stunning decor and florals, and much more. As we celebrate our 40th anniversary, we want to thank Yukon Nation as we look forward to the next 40 years. Visit us at PowerStationEvents.com and let us help you plan your next awesome event. Planning a move? Let Lip and Cut Van Lines, the official mover of the Yukon Huskies, take the worry and stress out of your relocation. Whether you're moving across the country, across the world, or just across the street, Lip and Cut Van Lines will handle your packing, moving, and storage needs with the care and quality they deserve. If the Yukon Huskies football team can trust Lip and Cut to get their gear to the field on time, you can trust them to get your items where they need to be. Call Lip and Cut Van Lines today for a free estimate at 800-245-8563. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question, are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, equal housing lender. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. Have time in Brooklyn, UConn on top of Northwestern, 40 to 18, led by Donovan Klingon. 12 points, 11 rebounds, five block shots. Alex Caravan made a three pointer, he's got three. Kristen Newton has nine points, five assists, only one rebound. Steph Castle has five, and Cam Spencer has seven. Hassan Diara got four points and two assists off the bench. Samson Johnson, Jalen Stewart did not score. For Northwestern, they were led by Nick Martinelli. He scored eight points on four of eight shooting. Lou Conger has four. Boo Booey, 0 for 6 from the floor, made two free throws. Their leading scorer of the season has two points. Ryan Langborg had two points, two rebounds, and also two fouls. And Brooks Barnheiser did not score off the bench. Blake Preston scored two. Blake Smith and Justin Mullins did not score for Northwestern, which is 8 of 31, 26% in the first half, 0 for 8 from three. Two for two from the line. UConn was 53% from the floor in the first half. They've shot 52% or better from the floor in six of their last nine halves. UConn was two for 11 from three-point range. And from the line, they were six of seven. Huskies out-rebounded Northwestern 21 to 15. UConn had 13 assists on 16 field goals. They've been amazing of late. 75% in the last four games assist on the two field goal ratio. He had 88 assists on 118 field goals coming in, and that'll go up after this 13 assists on 16 field goal first half, while Northwestern had three assists on eight field goals. Each team had three turnovers in the first half. Each team got four points off turnovers. UConn had two steals, five blocks, all by Klingon. Northwestern had one steal and no blocks. And Northwestern had three offensive rebounds, good for two second-chance points. Here's an odd stat. UConn was shooting so well, only had one offensive rebound. That was by Klingon. And they got four points off that one offensive rebound. I'm not quite sure how that would work, but that's what it says here. Points in the paint, 28-12 to 12, UConn. Fast break points, 11 nothing UConn. Bench points, UConn 4. And Northwestern had two. Huskies' biggest lead was 23 points with a minute to go in the first half. They scored seven straight to start the game, and they have led the entire game. At halftime, it's 40-18 to 18 in favor of UConn. From our Big Y broadcast location, let's pause 10 seconds for a station ID from Brown, Panderas, and Scott. This is UConn basketball on Learfield.
looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Keeping you ahead of severe weather is the most important thing we do. Hi, I'm Channel 3 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. And I'm meteorologist Scott Haney. We're doubling down on our commitment to you with something you won't see anywhere else. First alert weather. It's our promise to alert you as far in advance as possible. Simply put, when we know, you know. So you have more time to plan, prepare, and to keep your family safe. This is why we first alert. Big Y, your family market is proud to be the broadcast booth sponsor of the Yukon Radio Network. Whether it's a meal for two or setting up a feast for the whole team, make sure to visit your local Big Y for it all. Grab some grinders, a party-sized pizza, even sushi and sandwiches. Big Y has all the essentials to satisfy even the hungriest crew. I'm iHeartMedia's Renee Danino, reminding you that it all starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. The tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On Sirius XM College Sports Radio, there's complete coverage of every major conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash College Sports Radio 23. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Connecticut. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Connecticut and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the University of Connecticut. Back at Brooklyn, UConn, the number one overall seed in this 2024 NCAA tournament, playing like it. Sixth time they've been a number one seed in this tournament. First time they've been number one overall. They lead it 40 to 18. As we come back, Northwestern will inbound the ball. And their leading scorer, Boo Booey, still looking for his first basket of the game. Does have two free throws. Well, I think it's all about Steph Castle. And he really took Bowie out of the game, and Northwestern hasn't really found other answers. All right, he's guarding him now out of the timeline. He gives up on the high, on the bounce to Langborg. He is picked up by Newton. They go back to Bowie. Bowie is blocked by Klingon again. That's six for him. And a foul is called, I believe. What is it? Oh, a foul on Northwestern, it looks like. And Boo Bowie has to be frustrated. He committed the foul. Klingon had a double-double in the first half, 12 and 11. Now he might have a triple-double before this thing's all over. And a backdoor caught by Caravan. Klingon gets the assist. Caravan flushes it home with two hands. UConn's got the first bucket of the second half. Now it's Barnheiser front court, right back to Langborg. He starts right, guarded by Newton. Gives it up to Martinelli. Martinelli out front to Hunger, who dribbles to his left. He attacks Klingon, and he laid it in. It went in, but it was also goaltended. So Hunger able to score. He's had a pretty decent day, really. Now got eight points. Or six points, pardon me. Three for four from the field. 42-20, UConn. Spencer front court left on the left wing. Gives it up to Klingon at the high post as Northwestern moves their defense out further on the perimeter. Caravan deals it to Klingon, who banks it in, but a foul was called before that. And it was on Langborg, well, that's his, Ryan Langborg. That's his third. And I mentioned in the first half that Chris Collins, like Jim Calhoun, usually doesn't play a starter with two fouls. But I think the horse was leaving the barn. He had to put Langborg back in the game. The guy that scored 27 on Friday has got two points and three fouls in this game. Uh, Spencer inbounds to Klingon, top of the arc. Hands over to Spencer, who peels to his right, now backs away and gives to Caravan on the right wing. Caravan back to the basket, back out front to Newton on the right side, and at the hash near Dan Hurley. Backdoor cut, Caravan. Caravan lays it in off a great pass from Tristan Newton. Again, Newton looking for his teammates. Six assists for him. 
Caravan now with a couple of buckets. Got seven. Here's Langborg. Martinelli can't get a shot off. Hands to Barnheiser. Tries to attack Spencer. Goes to a fadeaway and makes it from about 16 away straight on the basket. 44-22. UConn's doubled up. The Wildcats, 22 wins for them this year in the Big Ten. Third in the Big Ten. This is Newton on the left wing to our left. Cross from his own bench. Starts to his right of a screen by Klingon. Drives to the paint. Puts him a wild shot. Missed it. And a foul is called late by Joe Lindsay. And Chris Collins is upset. He did not think that was a foul. That was one of those late whistles where the shooter puts his shot up. And you don't call the foul, and then the ball doesn't go in, and then you do call the foul. Maybe you can explain that. Lindsey's going over right now to have a talk with Chris Collins, who disagrees with that call on Martinelli, his first. That last field goal by Barnheiser, he's their second-leading scorer behind Boo Booey. First points of the night. All right, Newton makes a free throw, and he is four for seven from the field. Got ten points now, six assists. He's on his way to perhaps another double-double. Martinelli committed his first foul. And the second one good by Tristan. UConn on the line has the advantage. They're 8 of 9. Northwestern 2 of 2. Boo Booey across the timeline left to right. Guarded by Castle. Starts to his right. Castle goes underneath the screen. Boo Booey with a high arcing three. No good back rim from straight away. Here's Newton on a run out. He gets it to Klingon. And Klingon had the ball deflected off of a Northwestern player and out of bounds. As UConn has really been pushing the pace, been impressive with their fast breaking. Hunger defended that play pretty well, forcing the ball out of bounds and not a fast break hoop for UConn. Now they get it into Castle, who fires to Spencer. High arcing three, no good back rim off the right sideline. It's rebounded by Barnheiser. Here's Bowie to the front court right, and he is fouled by Spencer. He made like a stop and go move, and he was able to draw the foul on Spencer. I thought Bowie fouled Castle on the way down. Castle was pretty close to him, and he tried to use that left arm as an arm bar. Nothing called, and eventually Spencer picks up foul number one. All right, Bowie looks to inbound the ball, and he gets it into Hunger on the right uh, wing, and he hands it off to Barnheiser. Langborg spins to his right. He attacks Klingon. Klingon might have got a piece. It missed the shot. It's an air ball. Outlet Castle. Castle to the running Newton. Oh, Newton laid it in. Oh, what a finish. He got rocked. What concentration by Tristan Newton. Somehow it went in. I don't even think he saw the rim he got hit so hard. Oh, he's laughing about it now. I think Luke Hunger got him that time. A lot of contact on the left side of the lane. Again, UConn getting the ball down the court in a hurry. More transition points for the Huskies. And a three-point play by Newton. He's starting to light it up. He's got 14 now, and UConn leads 48-22. to Three minutes gone by in the second half. This is Barnheiser. Brooks, 49-22, pardon me, and a foul on Newton. He tried to reach in on Langborg, and he commits a foul. uh, UConn is really playing some great basketball here in these two days at Brooklyn. At both ends of the court, and that's another key defensive matchup. We talked about Langborg, who had the 27-point game on Friday. Well, Tristan Newton's been the primary defender on Langborg, who has only taken two shots. He's one of two. Yeah, that's the impressive thing. He's taken two shots. All right, here's Hunger on the high post right, looking to hand it off to Bowie. He's faced up, fires it out front to Langborg, who starts to his right, picked up by Klingon on a switch, and he knocks down a three over the big guy. Wow. What a shot by Ryan Langborg. Well, we just talked about that, and that time Newton, the defender, was wiped out on a screen. That's what gave the open look from the right side. It wasn't that open, though. Klingon got up on him pretty well to close out. Langborg still made the shot. They fired to Klingon on the high post left. He goes back to Newton. Newton spins into the paint. Now reverses back to the top of the foul line. He gets to Klingon. Oh, Klingon got hit hard by Bowie. And a foul is called. I don't think you want to run into Klingon near the basket. He weighs 280, and he takes the brunt of some physicality. Boo Booey picks up foul number two. So you got the 6'2 guard fouling the 7'2 center. (laughs) That can't work out too well for the 6'2 guy, I don't think. So Klingon on the line for the free throw, and it's good. Looks good shooting him tonight. Klingon now three for three. He's got 
Double-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds in 17 minutes. He goes through cycles. He misses a bunch, then he makes a bunch. Like in the Big East Championship game, he was 8 of 11 from the line, both career highs. And he makes another one. So UConn extends the lead to 51-25. And we have uh, three and a half minutes gone by here in the first half. This is Boo Booey guarded by Castle. Castle, he starts to his left. Booey tries to fend him off of the right hand. He gives to Langborg, who starts to his right. Kicks it over to Preston on the wing, and he hands to Bowie. They go alley-oop to Preston, and Preston able to dunk. 51-27. Nice play by the Wildcats. They stole that one out of the UConn playbook right there. <laughs> Here's Castle. On the front court left gives to Caravan out front. They work the perimeter to Newton now on the right sideline, and a foul is called. That might be on Bowie, and that could be his third. So... Newton puts pressure on Bowie as a defender, and that can be an issue. He's got three now. We've got a long way to go in this game. UConn basketball presented in part by UConn Health, the official health care partner of the UConn Huskies. 51-27, Connecticut, 15-54 to go here in the second round game. From Brown Payne, Darris, and Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to Last Fly Off Airport Parking. Located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks, they have both valet and self-park options to fit any budget. Last Fly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time, every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre-booking online at lazfly.com. Last Fly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of UConn Athletics. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. Paul? Yes? Question, are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors' Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is UConn Men's Basketball. Now back to our Big Y broadcast location. Pencil Cheap is Connecticut's newest cheap retailer at their all-new state-of-the-art dealership, offering exceptional customer service in the community for over 100 years. Hey, tomorrow night, more NCAA basketball. UConn women taking on Syracuse. Round two action of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament at Gamble Pavilion. Bob Joyce, Deb Fisk have all the action. Beginning at 5.30 here along the UConn Sports Network and the Varsity Network app and the varsitynetwork.com. And then Syracuse has a prolific score, Wayne. They can be trouble. Well, UConn had trouble against her this year. And Syracuse, a team that's also beaten Notre Dame twice. Actually, it's Notre Dame has got the uh, prolific store, score I was thinking about. But, you know, that that's not chopped liver that Notre Dame, that Syracuse has done that. So I think it'll be a tough matchup for the Huskies and Paige Beckers. Bob and Debbie with the call tomorrow at 5.30 here on the UConn Sports Network. Huskies running really well. They've had more fast break points here in the second half. It's 14 nothing in fast break points in this game. As UConn shooting percentage for the contest has now gone up. It's at 56%. Northwestern gone up a little bit here but they're still just 32 percent from the floor they have rebounded better since the slow start but still UConn with an eight rebound advantage 24 to 16 11 by Klingon. UConn in the 37th NCAA tournament trying to get to their 19th sweet 16 been to the elite eight 12 times in the final four of course six times with five championships but we're still early it's the second round and then after UConn plays here if they can win it they'll go to boston for the sweet 16 here they are on the front court left and newton had the ball knocked out of bounds by the wildcats we have 16 to shoot right in front of dan hurley who picks it up and he'll get it up to spencer and cam will inbound the ball both teams only three turnovers apiece all right here's newton circles to his right 
pulls back, fires in the left corner to Castle for three, in and out. And a rebound, Martinelli had a good clean look at it, but Steph couldn't get it to go down. He's now two for five on the night. Here's Bowie trying to drive by Castle, can't do it. Hands off, and a steal by Newton. Newton all alone, and he throws it down. Two hands. Tristan Newton. Who said he doesn't have hops? Newton with 16. Just his third dunk of the year. That time of the easiest dunk maybe of his career. Yeah, you got to dunk that one. You know, you clean look at it. No one around. 53-27, UConn. 15-10 to go. This is Hunger. Drives to his right. Now he backs away. He's trying to back down Klingon. Turns left, turns right, and can't get it to go. Klingon gets the rebound. On the outlet to Spencer on the left sideline. Spencer holds. Starts back to his right of a screen by Klingon. Into the paint. Spencer all the way to the basket. Scoops it up and in from the right side of the lane. Spencer got nine now. He caught 55 to 27. Timeout called by Northwestern. So the media timeout will be... uh, Right here with 14.40 to go. UConn basketball presented in part by Johnson Brunetti. Proud to be the official wealth management provider of the UConn Huskies. So UConn 55, Northwestern 27, 14.40 left here in this second round game. From Brown, Payne, Darris, and Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Looking to score a home run in the real estate game? Look no further than Lewis Real Estate. We're not just about the commission. We're about giving back to the community. With below market fees and personalized attention, we're the advocate you need in your corner. Don't settle for less. Choose Lewis Real Estate and make your real estate dreams a reality. Visit the Lewis Business Center conveniently located at 994 to 1000 Farmington Avenue, West Hartford. That's slewisrealestate.com. The exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Fight on, Connecticut. This is the UConn Sports Network from Learfield. Into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force and I deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. My service never stops. Brought to you by N Family Fire and the Ad Council. Zach Linfield with you from inside the network studios in Spokane at Spokane Veterans Memorial Col- or Arena, that is. The 12 seed Grand Canyon, who came in a Cinderella hope today against a 4 seed Alabama out of the SEC, has stormed all the way back in the second half after the tide led by 10, 10 minutes ago. Grand Canyon is on an 8 0 spurt. They now hold a 58 to 56 lead, shooting five of their last seven from the floor. Offense has been no question today for Grand Canyon. Either has it been for UConn. Fellas? Yeah, Bryce Drew doing a nice job coaching there. Two number 12s have won already in this tournament. A couple of 13s have won. A couple of fours, a couple of fives have gone down. Uh, We got UConn baseball action coming up on the radio this week. Uh, The baseball nine hosting Boston College Tuesday, Northeastern Wednesday at Elliott Ballpark. Here's Boo Booey in the paint. Dumps it down low and a steal by Spencer. He stepped in. 3.05, 3.05, the first pitches in those baseball games, by the way. Our radio coverage begins at 2.45 here on the UConn Sports Network. Newton's three. Back rim no good. Rebounded by Caravan. Gives to the cutting Spencer. Deals to Diara. A left-hander, rather, up the left wing. A three by Diara. No good. Out of bounds it goes. Hey, come join the Datco team in 2024. Go to datco.com forward slash jobs. Datco, the UConn's exclusive transportation partner. Northwestern comes up with it. 
Klingen comes out, and Samson Johnson comes in. UConn baseball beat Rutgers not far from here in Piscataway. 5-1 to one today to salvage one game of that three-game weekend set. Yeah, Huskies are not off to a great start after a couple of fabulous seasons in a row, winning over 40 games. And here's the drive inside by Preston, and he is blocked by Samson Johnson. And Spencer came up with it, and the ball knocked out of bounds by Northwestern. Now that was Hunger, rather, who had the ball taken away from him. It's a sophomore forward from Montreal, Quebec. So Johnson gets in on the block party that right now has a career-high six blocks for Klingon. Uh, Blake Smith has come in, the sophomore guard from Blue Bell, Pennsylvania. He's a walk-on. Yeah, he'll be guarding Diara here. Here's Castle out front with it. Starts to his right. And now picks up his dribble. Fires on the left sideline to Newton. Newton has it with 10 to shoot behind the screen of Samson Johnson. He goes into the paint. Alley oops to Johnson and slaps and does his thing. 57 27. Another great assist from Newton. And the Yukon crowd is on their feet. Here is Martinelli's drive. He missed the shot. It's rebounded by Northwestern. And they get a three pointer by Bernheiser from straight away. And they finally knock down a three of their second of the game. They're two for 11. Yukon's lead is 57 to 30. Castle on the right side, nine in front of Dan Hurley with left hand dribble. Now he starts back to his left, picked up by Martinelli on a switch. Castle goes to his right hand, fires in the far corner to Newton. Newton guarded by Boo Booey, trying to get a shot off. Now he does fire it, and no good. And a ball loose, and Martinelli comes up with it. Martinelli quickly ahead to Barnheiser on the right sideline. Front court right, guarded by Diara on a, a mismatch here. Barnheiser tried to go up with it, and he's fouled by Samson Johnson. Jalen Stewart's going to check in for the Huskies. Sampson commits the foul, trying to help on defense that time was Johnson. He's got his, says first, but I believe it's his, no, it is his first. Well, I thought he had one of the first half, too, though. Yeah, one over here by too. the baseline that he kind of questioned. Uh, well, Brooks Barnheiser is a junior. Right? Now it's, it's on Diara. Oh, it's on Diara. Okay, Brooks Barnheiser makes the free throw. He's a junior guard. He averages 14 and a half. He's got six, now seven in this game after two free throws. 57-32, UConn. Here's Castle, front court left, and he hands it off to Newton. Newton uh, skips it right to DR. Straight away, DR now in a high post handoff. It's Samson Johnson. Gives it back to Newton behind the screen of Samson, and he almost threw it away. DR picks it up on the baseline, drives inside, goes to Samson. The ball is taken away by Northwestern. Fourth turnover by the Huskies. Here's Bowie. Trying to drive inside on DR, can't get by him. Kick it outside, they work the perimeter to Hunger. Uh, bounce pass down low to Barnheiser, he attacks. Newton kicks it back outside to Hunger for three, no good. And rebounded by Newton. He runs to the front court. And Tristan pulls him on the right sideline, 11.40 to go in the game. 6'10", Hunger's now missed his last 11 three-point shots. You want him taking that shot in a game like this? Uh, maybe. <laughs> might as well. He might make one. Who knows? Here's Newton. Between the rings. Kicks it on the left sideline to Diara. Now they're down to six. They're down to five. They fire to Newton, who drives baseline. Alley oops to Samson Johnson, who catches and lays it in delicately. Slampson, not that time, but an easy deuce. 59 to 32, UConn. Wayne, the dunks just keep piling up for this team, even though that wasn't one. And Newton's been incredible. Coming in, he had assisted on eight of UConn's last 11 dunks over two games. Got eight assists in this game. Here's Bowie on the right front court, and he falls down over Castle, and a foul is called on Castle. And so that'll be uh, Steph's third. And so that'll bring us to the under-12 minute media timeout. Big Y, the official broadcast booth sponsor. Of the UConn Sports Network, supporting all our local teams. Big Y, your family market, it's more than food. It's supporting local. The Huskies winning big, 59-32, to 32, just under 11 minutes to go. This is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Calling all movers and shakers, those cranking around on crutches, the high heeled, the ready to be healed, the always on your feet. We are masters of mobility, healers of joints, muscles, bones. What moves you moves us. 
We are UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, where we practice what we teach. Here, academic medicine, research, and clinical care unite as one relentless power, because together, anything is possible. Visit us at health.uconn.edu. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. I'm Mike Crispino, voice of the Huskies, introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice, caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer terms apply. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync Sync My my Game. game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. The Huskies live here. You're listening to play-by-play coverage of UConn men's basketball. Presented by Key Bank. 42 of UConn's 59 points tonight in the paint. They have a 42-16 to 16 advantage. We all know under the basket prime real estate. Points in the paint brought to you by Lewis Real Estate, the exclusive real estate company of UConn Athletics. Looking to buy or sell, call 860-404-26. Of 55. One other note on the, the baseball softball scene. The Red Hot UConn softball team is home for a pair this weekend. A BU visits the Connecticut Softball Complex Tuesday at 4. And then it's uh, home to Providence Thursday night at 7 this week. Go to UConnHuskies.com to learn more about Laura Valentino's Huskies. And they had a 13-game win streak snap today. They were beaten at Butler 2-1. to one. They took 2 out of 3 from that weekend series. And today was a bottom of the seventh inning, walk-off, one-out, sacrifice fly. They did the Huskies in. 2-1. to one. They lose at Butler. This is the third time the UConn men have played at the Barclay Center. Of course, they played back on Friday night. But also, on the season opener in 2013-14, they played down here and beat Maryland. 78-77. As I recall, Tyler Olander had a big late jump shot in that game. Uh, here's Bowie gets it in. And barely Luke Hunger in the right corner. Bowie goes to a floater in and out, batted around by Hunger. Back in the hands of Bowie on the right sideline at the foul line extended. Was that a shot or a pass? I that was know. weird. I, I think it's going to count as a shot. Barnheiser trying to post up Jalen Stewart. Spins, puts it up, and made it. And a foul is called on Jalen Stewart. I almost feel like Jalen Stewart, like in the NBA, if you're a rookie and you're guarding someone, you never get the benefit of the doubt. I feel like as a freshman here with UConn playing here in the last few weeks, he's been getting some time. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt ever. I thought, and that was a good example, I thought, right I, there. I thought, Mike, on that prior play, that it was like a lob from Bowie to Hunger inside, but Johnson sealed him off. Hunger couldn't get from the baseline right to where the ball came down. It counted as a missed shot. All right, Barnheiser makes a three-point play, and now he's got ten. First man at double figures for the Wildcats. You've got front court left. It's Newton straight away. They go down low to Sampson Johnson. Rip City with two hands. He dunks another one, and UConn leads 61-35. Credited now with three dunks. Notice how I said that. Yes. All right, here's Bowie driving by DR all the way to the paint. Missed it. A floater got his own rebound and put it back in. So Bowie finally gets a field goal after nine misses. Or ten, pardon me. Finally gets one. He's one of 11. This is Newton between the rings. Gives it up to DR on the left sideline. He starts to his right. Guarded by Bowie for the moment. Now he backs away on the right wing and gives to Spencer. The cut by Diaro. Lays it up. Missed it. Rebounded by Samson Johnson, but a foul is called. Diaro will have a chance. Go to the line to shoot two. Hassan hit the deck on that one. A lot of traffic in the lane as he cut down the middle. Hunger got the foul. That's four. 9.41 left in the game. UConn leading 61-37. to 37. You know, being here in Brooklyn, I, I think about my old broadcast partner, did five years with him at UConn football and basketball, Marty Glickman. Marty was a Brooklyn guy, wrote a book called The Fastest Kid on the Block. He lived about five miles south of where we're located right now. And if you were still around, I bet you would have enjoyed coming here to watch UConn play at the Barclays Center. 
Yeah, it's a beautiful arena. It's just in the middle of a borough. It's <laughs> virtually the parking situation is impossible. But I, I think they built it here because they wanted people to take mass transit, like the Garden in New York. You're right, right over the Penn Station. Right, and there's a big transportation hub right here. So exactly. a lot of people take everything from the LIR to the subway out here. Yeah. It we did, not and we got stuck in massive traffic. Yeah, it makes sense, though, in a, in a city full of people like we have in Brooklyn and New York to get them to go mass transit. Here's Bowie front court right. Has the ball at the foul line extended. Gives it up on a bounce. He worked down low to Hunger. And he missed the banker. It's rebounded by Northwestern. And back out front to Bowie it comes. Justin Mullins back in the game now. And a foul on the drive on Castle. And Steph Castle doesn't know what to do. That'll be four on the UConn freshman. And he's got to come out. I think Newton's going to come in and Caravan's going to come in. Well, one reason why Steph Castle got the Big East Freshman of the Year award is because how well he's played defense. The coaches noticed that when they voted. And today, despite the four fouls, he has been just locked down defensive on Boo Booey. A lot, of, a lot of unrest over there, Wayne. They th- I think the fans thought it should have been a two-shot foul, but there wasn't. It's just an out-of-bounds play to Northwestern. That would narrow the lead to 21. Barnheiser, and he hit a little fadeaway from the lane. A 62-39, UConn leads. Nine minutes to go. Newton, Caravan, Spencer, Klingon, and Jalen Stewart for UConn. There's Spencer between the rings. Starts to his right. Front court left in front of his own bench. Backs away with a right-hand dribble. Starts back to his left. Now drives into the paint. And puts up a little floater. Drops it in. Camp Spencer is really adept at that particular shot. It went in. He's got 11. UConn leads 64-39, and a three by Langvor goes in. And Luke Murray, the assistant, really upset with Jalen Stewart for not guarding on that play. UConn leading 64-42. Here's Newton on the right wing. Starts back to his left. Now hands it over to Clayton, gets it back. Newton drives to the paint on Barnheiser. Puts him a wild shot, and it went in. Oh, that was magic. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was bird-like. I don't know how he even got it up on the rim. Newton does it again, and now a turnover by Northwestern. <laughs> He's had two of those tonight, Wayne. I, I know it's radio, but OMG, are you kidding me? Boy, look at Luke Murray, the assistant coach, coming out and getting right in the face of Jalen Stewart and Cam Spencer. They didn't like something. I got it had, it had to do with defensive matchup. No question. If you've been injured in an accident, give yourself the Salomon O'Reilly advantage. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Call one eight hundred Win Win One. Salomon O'Reilly is the exclusive and official personal injury law firm of UConn Athletics. So the score sixty six forty two. UConn eight minutes to go. From Brown Pandaris and Scott, this is UConn Hoops on Learfield. Big Y, your family market is proud to be the broadcast booth sponsor of the Yukon Radio Network. Whether it's a meal for two or setting up a feast for the whole team, make sure to visit your local Big Y for it all. Grab some grinders, a party-sized pizza, even sushi and sandwiches. Big Y has all the essentials to satisfy even the hungriest crew. I'm iHeartMedia's Renee Danino, reminding you that it all starts with a trip to Big Y, your family market. It's more than food. It's my Big Y. The exclusive home of the Huskies. This is the Yukon Sports Network from Learfield. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. 
marido fue pintor más de 30 años. Cuando me dijo que se le estaban olvidando las cosas, fue difícil. Un día me dijo, me dijeron que pintara el marco del lado por dentro y pinté el lado de afuera. Yo le di a la gente que le diga a su familia lo que está pasando con él. Si algo se nota diferente, podría ser Alzheimer. Es momento de hablarlo. Visita alz.org diagonal nuestras historias para saber más. Un mensaje de The Alzheimer's Association y The Ad Council. Tomorrow night, the UConn women take on the Syracuse Orange in round two of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament at Camp of Pavilion. Uh, Bob Joyce and Deb Fisk will have all the action beginning at 5.30 here along the UConn Sports Network, the Varsity Network app, and the varsitynetwork.com. 66-42, UConn. Eight minutes to go. I mean, you got to stay interested, right, when you're playing in games like this because you lead by a big margin. UConn even lets up a little bit. Dan Hurley lets them know about it. Luke Murray, the assistant. Tom Moore, doesn't matter who. Kamada Young, they're all getting in the faces of their team. Well, why are they so excited? Well, in the second half, UConn has only outscored Northwestern 26-24, to although UConn has hit its last four shots. Well, here's Spencer front court left on the right sideline. Gives it up to Caravan on the right hash. Back to Spencer left wing. Gives it up to Newton. Newton holds at the left wing outside the arc as they try to set up something. They're down to 15 to shoot. Get it. Spencer on the right side. He starts to right. Starts right. Skips it across court. Intercepted. Langborg with it into the front court. He stops and fires, and he makes it. So Northwestern within 21, 66, 45, seven and a half to go. Four turnovers by Spencer. Yeah, that was a poorly executed pass. You can't throw it across court. I mean, people are going to take advantage of it. Here's Newton, front court left, backs away from Bowie, who guards him closely. Tristan on the left hash, gets it to the cutting Spencer. Spencer trying to dump it down low to Caravan, gives it back to Spencer. Spencer in the baseline right to Klingen, kicks it back out of Caravan for three, and it's in and out. It's rebounded by Barnheiser. Barnheiser runs to the front court, pulls it to the top of the key, drives it left, spins, ducks, Shoots and banks it home. And the Wildcats are within 19, 66-47. So Barnheiser, 14 to lead the way. They've hit five straight. And here's Spencer, a handoff to Newton. Newton back to his right on the right sideline. Gives it up to Spencer. Spencer out front to Klingen. Klingen fires right to Jalen Stewart. Stewart out front to Newton. Newton now starts to his left. Yeah, he's got Klingen open. Didn't see him. Now he starts with a tricky dribble, tries to go to the paint, and lost the ball on the way up, and out of bounds it goes, and they turn it over. And Hassan Diara is going to come in and replace Jalen Stewart. Just five turnovers for UConn, just six for Northwestern. Both teams take really good care of the ball all season long. Huskies have kind of gotten away from getting touches inside for Donovan Klingen. They were really good when they did that in the first half. That is true. And here's Boo Bowie. And this Wildcat crowd has come alive here. And UConn having their lead cut down to 19, 66, 47. And it's a pretty good Northwestern crowd here in Brooklyn. No doubt. Here's Bowie trying to drive by Newton. He blows by him, and he banks it up. Missed the shot. Rebounded by Klingen. Got another one. Klingen with 13 boards. Newton in the front court to our left. Fires it left to DR. DR guarded by Langborg. Back outside of Newton on the left sideline right in front of us. Newton starts to his right with a dribble into the paint. He's tripped up, and down he goes. Flat on his stomach. And Boo Booey is going to be called for his fourth personal. Newton looks a little shook up. He's hunched over right now, got his hands on his knees. He hit the deck pretty hard after that foul by Bowie, who has four fouls. And so Newton will go to the line. That's the eighth team foul. They've been using Klingon more in these last five minutes or so, setting high screens. A couple of times he peels off those and looks for the lob pass inside, but they really haven't gotten it to him as well here lately. So right. Trist- Tr- Tristan Newton will go to the free throw line where he's been really good of late, although he didn't take any free throws at all in the Stetson game on Friday, just the fourth time all year. And yeah, free throw, no good. It rolled in and out. It's rebounded by the Wildcats. And Newton had 13 and 8 assists against Stetson. He's had another good game here today. Here's Bowie. 
Between the rings, he attacked Klingon. Puts the shot up, and it goes in. And he's fouled. Northwestern, 66-49. That's the first foul of the game for Klingon, as well as he has played. With the 14 points, 13 rebounds, one assist, and he hasn't committed fouls until now. And that time you had Newton defending Bowie, and Newton got wiped out in a pick at the top of the circle, and that allowed the left side of the lane to be open for Bowie. Bowie's just, he's just two for 13 on the the night, got four assists. He's got got to play now with four fouls the rest of the way. 5.26 to go is... Northwestern has rallied. That outscored UConn 31-26 in the second half. They're on a 7-0 run now over the last two minutes plus. Uh, they've made five of their last six field goals. UConn on a scoring drought of almost three minutes. Is, uh, again, a little bit of a lackadaisical effort, but a good, strong uh, effort coming from Northwestern at this point. They trailed 40-18. to you know, I gave a little time. geography earlier on about Marty Glickman, who grew up about five miles south of here, and about two miles south of here is what was Ebbets Field. Now it's the Ebbets Field Apartments. Tore that down after the Dodgers headed west. All right, so it's going to be Bowie going to the line and gets a chance for two free throws. Northwestern hasn't missed at the line. They're 5 for 5. UConn 12 of 15. He's made 10 straight. And so Bowie's first one rims in on the basket and the free throws, a three point play. 66 50, a 16 point lead. Here's Spencer to gives to Caravan. It's DR on the left hash. In the front court left, gives it over to Newton out front. Newton to Klingon, who spins to his right, holds. Good D by Northwestern. They get it to Spencer on the right sideline. Spencer launches a three. No good in and out. Caravan got the rebound. He kicks it back outside to Newton. Now he gives it to DR on the left corner for three. And that one rims in and out. And a rebound by the Wildcats. Justin Mullins has it. He gives it up to Bowie. Bowie into the paint. Holds. Hands to Hunger. Takes it back. Little stop and go move on the paint. Missed the shot. Clinging got the rebound. And the Huskies hold him off on that last play he sequence. Also, he also altered the shot in the first place. Yeah, UConn has not put a point on the board in three and a half minutes. And Diara makes the call at the timeline. And they get it over to Newton. Six seconds left to shoot. Got to hurry. Here's Tristan. He's going to fire a three. No good. Back rim. Batted around. Caravan got it. Caravan kicks it back out to Newton. UConn going to take their time. They go to Diara. And they throw it away. And Northwestern gets it again. And here they come. Barnheiser has the balls chipped out of his hands by Newton and out of bounds. It'll be Northwestern basketball in the under four-minute timeout. Newton with the turnover. He's got three of UConn six. And as soon as that ball got thrown away, Coach Hurley went to Steph Castle, the freshman, who's got four fouls and got him off the bench. He might be coming in for Newton. <clears throat> All right. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors. Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine, a revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals. Fruit-flavored contains zero percent fruit juice caffeine from caffeine and guarana participation may vary limited time offer terms apply so mounting a comeback northwestern is back within 16 in the game 66 50 with just under four minutes to go from brown pandaris and scott this is yukon hoops on learfield are you traveling out of Bradley Airport and need a safe, reliable place to park your car? Trust your vehicle to Last Fly Off Airport Parking, located on Route 75 in Windsor Locks. They have both valet and self park options to fit any budget. Last Fly is open 24 hours a day and will get you to the airport on time every time. Join their loyalty program to earn points for free parking and be sure to ask about their corporate discounts. Save 20% by pre booking online at lazfly.com. Last Fly is the official parking company and a proud supporter of Yukon Athletics. At KeyBank, we know a small moment like, Huh, what's it like to have a yard? Can lead to an even bigger question like, Am I ready to buy a home? And that's the type of moment where we'll meet you, prepared to talk about everything you need to know when applying for a mortgage, so you can try to turn those backyard dreams into reality. 
Paul? Yes? Question. Are you a hammock person? You know, I think I might be. For every financial need, we'll meet you in the moment. Key Bank opens doors. NMLS 399797, Equal Housing Lender. College sports fans now have access to hundreds of weekly podcasts that zero in on the college sports world. Now available in the Varsity Podcast Network and part of the new Varsity app. The app is free and available from wherever you get your favorite apps. Download the Varsity app today to have access to hundreds of national podcasts as well as your favorite team-focused podcasts. The Varsity Podcast Network, now available for free on the Varsity app. Download from the App Store and listen today. The Yukon Huskies are on the air. This is Yukon Men's Basketball. Now, back to our Big Y broadcast location. Zach Linfield with you quickly inside the Learfield Network Studios. UConn 66, Northwestern 50, trying to hold off this comeback attempt. Final score, Alabama did come back and beat Grand Canyon 72-61. to Score currently right now, the number two overall seed in the tournament leads Texas A&M by a point, 34-33. And again, that final score between Clemson and Baylor, 72-64. Down goes a three seed after being tied at 64 apiece with just minutes to go. Guys? Well, stay with us after the game, the Hard Auto Group post-game show. we got game highlights, interviews, final stats, scores coming your way. Courtesy of the Hard Auto Group, shop Hard Auto Group. We treat you like family or only a heartbeat away. Hardcars.com. Northwestern to inbound to our right. And Boo Booey having some trouble, and he does finally get it in to Langborg. He takes a handoff from the center, and a ball knocked loose, and Klingon got a steal out of it. As Blake Preston and company couldn't handle it cleanly. Or Luke Hunger, pardon me. UConn has it front court left. Out front to Castle. Castle starts left, gives to Newton. And a foul is called on Mullins, who reached in. And that will put UConn on the line to shoot one and one. Mullins, a transfer from Denver, who's an Illinois guy, averages 0.0 rebounds a game. So he's getting some time here in the final four minutes. Yeah, Blake Preston, the center, came from Liberty University. And their other transfer of note was Ryan Langborg, who came from Princeton as part of that big Princeton NCAA run last year. They got two wins. Newton front end, good. Mike, we talk about it a lot with this team. That You take one part of the UConn game away, they find other ways to beat you. And they've beaten you in the paint today as the paint production has been very impressive for UConn, 48-26. to 26. But the three-point shooting is what they took away. Two for 20. Some of those are open looks. UConn's worst three-point shooting game this year was the loss at Creighton. Mm-hmm. Three for 16. Today they're two for 20. 68-50, UConn, three and a half to go. Bowie across the timeline after the two free throws by Newton. And Bowie kicks it out front to Hunger. Hunger gives to Langborg, who drives right, puts up a shot over. Clanging, and he hits. I'll tell you what, he got hot in the overtime the other night against FAU and put it together. He can start lighting it up. you got to be careful with him. 68-52, UConn. Here's Newton across the timeline, being hounded by Mullins into the front court. Backs away to the timeline. Newton gives it up and a bounce to Castle. Castle picked up by Mullins. Castle drives right, deals it to Klingon, who dives inside, spins to his left, missed the shot. Rebound Mullins. Mullins gives to Bowie. 240 to go. Here come the Wildcats. Bowie runs into his own man. It's stolen by Newton. Castle has it. Castle drives by Hunger and lays it in. UConn turned a sloppy Wildcat possession into two as Castle went coast to coast. Kristen Newton got the steal. Here's Bowie, 70-52 UConn. Bowie starts right. He attacks Klingon all the way to the basket, and he's rejected. And the ball comes off loose and off the Caravan's foot on about seven blocks for Klingon, a career high. He's had five four different times, now seven in this game. He had five as a freshman, had five as a sophomore, and he just keeps shutting those shots down by Northwestern, which is still shooting 50% of the second half. Overall 36%, 36.8. Here is Barnheiser on the right baseline. He backs away from Caravan, fadeaway good, 15-footer. Barnheiser now leads the way with 16 for the Wildcats, 70 to 54. Two minutes to go in the game. Here's Spencer. 
Works his way across the timeline. Guarded by Bowie, who's got four fouls, and he gives it up to Castle on the right hash. Castle, left-hand dribble, starts to his left. Picked up by Barnheiser on a switch, gets back to Newton. Newton starts to his right. Outside the arc, he goes to Caravan. Caravan drives inside, puts up a tough shot and made it! (laughs) Caravan! Oh, he was determined that time as he drove the basketball, put up a floater, and it went in, and he got fouled. 72-54, UConn. Solo ball will check in. Jalen Stewart will check in. Good pick under the hoop by Klingen. Caravan used that to get the open look. Now, UConn right now has, uh, yeah, they got five men on Kristen Newton got the assist. It's a double-double. 20 points, 10 assists. Uh, Caravan missed the free throw, though. UConn 18-point lead, a minute and a half to go. Here come the Wildcats. Bowie has had two baskets in the game. Goes behind his back. Stop and go movie. Attacks Caravan. Puts it up over Stewart, and he gets fouled. And so Jaden Ross is going to check in. Let's see who he comes in for. Minute 24 to go. Bowie is going to uh, get two free throws. Three fouls on Stewart. For Tristan Newton, that's his 11th double-double of the season. Sometimes he gets it with rebounds, sometimes with assists right now. Amazing, isn't it? Ten assists. Jordan Clayton is going to check, and he's a freshman from Medford, Mass, as Bowie makes the first free throw. Well, I talked about Hassan Diara playing not far from home here. He's a Queens guy up near City Field and LaGuardia Airport. Well, Huskies hanging on here, and it's not exactly a homecoming, but you've got... Alex Caravan, who's from Southborough, Mass, as the Huskies would go up to Boston next week. All right, Bowie makes both. He now has eight points, a couple of field goals, four free throws, and he'll come out. Chris Collins will bring him out. That'll be the last appearance for Boo Bowie. Career scoring leader for Northwestern. And Very similar point total to UConn's career scoring leader, Chris Smith. Chris Collins gave him a long talk and a long hug. UConn front court left, it's Castle. Minute 15 left, 20 seconds to shoot it. Castle's going to run as much time as he can off it. Starts back to his left. Now he drives to the basket and kicks it back outside. The solo ball for three. No good. Rebounded by Jaden Ross. Ross is fouled and down he goes. Tell you what, Jaden Ross got some hops. We haven't seen a lot of him in his freshman year, but he can get up. He'll go to the line to try to shoot two here as Yusuf Sangari, Apostolus Rumaglu, and Drew Hurley are going to check in here in a moment. UConn leading 72-56 to 56 in the final minute. Jaden Ross, first free throw, no good. Hard off the glass. All right, Sangari comes in and replaces Johnson. Sampson, six points. I like the way that Steph Castle, freshman, Drove the left baseline. Looked like he might put a shot up, but instead he kicked the ball back out to the top of the circle to another freshman. That would be solo ball, but ball missed the shot. Jaden Ross, and missed them both. And a rebound, Barnheiser. He sprints to the front court, left to right. Picked up by Drew Hurley. Now he's going to post him up. Picked up by Singari on a switch. He kicked it outside of Langborg, and that's short. The three-pointer goes over to backboard and out of play. Andre Johnson's going to come in, I believe. Well, Northwestern, a good three-point shooting team. Four for 15 outside the arc. UConn, a good three-point shooting team. Two for 21 outside the arc. Huskies still built a 30-point lead in that game, which equals the biggest deficit for Northwestern this year. They were down 30 at Illinois. Yes, Ross, they lost. And Ross gets it into Singar and gives back to Jaden Ross, who hands it over to Andre Johnson. Johnson will drill a little across the timeline into the front court left. 20 seconds to shoot, 34 seconds left in game, and Andre's going to try a three. Got it! Dan Hurley was on the (laughs) sidelines yelling to his team, don't shoot, don't shoot. Once the shot went in, he turned his back, and right now he's facing the other direction. Oh, man. He still hasn't. He still doubled over over there. Oh, my God. Well, what can you say? I could read his lips. He's right across the court from us. He was saying, don't shoot. And as soon as that ball left Johnson's hands, the walk-on made it. The ball's in the air, and Hurley turned around, and when it went in, he was just shaking his head. And Chris, he just said to Chris Collins, I'm sorry about that. Chris said, don't worry. I get it. I get it. The guy wanted to shoot. The guy wanted to shoot. <laughs> oh, that is funny. 
<laughs> Barnheiser makes the free throw. And he has uh, he's the game high scorer, 17 for Northwestern. 75-57, now 75-58. Northwestern has cut into this 30-point UConn lead. They've outscored UConn by four here in the second half. But for the first 30 minutes of this game, UConn, despite not shooting threes well, was really playing well at both ends of the court. But they've had quite a lapse here in these last eight minutes. All right, they get it into Drew Hurley. And Hurley tries to work across the timeline, and he does. Right in front of us with a left-hand dribble. And almost lost it. Regains, he gives to Singari. You kind of run the clock out. 75-58 will be the final. And the Huskies advance to the Sweet 16 by defeating Northwestern. And let it big at halftime. 40-18. Andre Johnson's being mobbed by his teammates as he launched a three and it went in. And uh, the Wildcats will go home. Another good year, though, for Chris Collins and company. Won 22 games. And they were third in the conference. A lot of firsts for Northwestern this year. They really had a nice season. Wins over Purdue, Michigan State, Illinois, Nebraska, all NCAA teams. So that three-pointer by the walk-on at the final 30 seconds of the game gives UConn three made three-pointers, equaling a season low they had in the loss at Creighton. Three for 22. So, one of UConn's strengths, the threes were not going in today, but they dominated the paint for the second NCAA tournament game in a row. 52 points in the paint, the 26 for Northwestern. And they really got the fast break cranked up, especially after about five minutes in the first half. They had three or four of those almost in a row. They ran well in this game. Fast break points 14 to 4. Those were two key areas that UConn was able to make up for the poor three-point shooting. But still, overall, in the game, they shot 54%. So they've continued to shoot the lights out. They've been over 52% from the floor now in seven of the last ten halves they've played. And they hold another opponent under 40% shooting as the Wildcats were 37.3. UConn 23-0 and in the season, holding an opponent under 40%. Well, UConn is So they win it. They win it. UConn Cam number- Spencer's going to come over and talk to us for a moment. Uh, final score, 75 to 58. And Cam's finding his way. He's, he's shaking hands with the CBS folks, and so now he's coming over here. <laughs> Congratulations. UConn 75 to uh, 58 is uh, Cam Spencer joins us courtside. Mike Crispino, Wayne Norman. Well, another great first half by this team. 40 to 18 lead. I mean, you can't ask for a much better performance in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, similar to the other day. You know, we wanted to have a fast start, and, you know, I think that started on the defensive end. You know, it, it allowed us to get defensive rebound and get out in transition, which, uh, you know, I think we executed very well on. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can do it again next game. Three for 22. The three made threes is season low equals the three that you made in the loss of Creighton. But how much of that was just missed open looks, and how much of that was good perimeter defense by Northwestern? Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, I think they um, they, they make it tough on you defensively. They're a great defensive team. Um, you know, I think we missed some open looks as well that, you know, we'll knock down in the future. But, uh, you know, I'm really proud of the way that we fought tonight as a team. Yeah, 52 points in the paint. How about Donovan Kling and a career high in block shots? That guy's a major deterrent back there for you guys defensively. Unbelievable. I'm eight blocks. I didn't know he had that, but that's, that's crazy. Um, yeah, he, he does so much for us. You know, I don't think that that sheet really shows his impact on the game a lot of times um, just because he's, he's such a threat down there on the defensive end. If we get beat as guards on the perimeter, he has our back. So, you know, he, another hell of a game from, from Donovan tonight. And in your one year here at UConn, you must love to play with Tristan Newton. Another double-double for Tristan today, including 10 assists. Unbelievable. He makes the game so easy for his teammates. You know, it's so much fun to share the backcourt and share the floor with him. And, uh, you know, we're not done yet. We're ready to keep going. Yeah, one more thing on Newton. How about those crazy shots he made tonight? Uh, I mean, it was like no-look passes, but there were shots that yeah. went in. The the one layup was unbelievable. I, I couldn't <laughs> believe that went in. I don't know how he got it off. Um, you know, it, that's impressive. That's one of his many skills, and, you know, he played great tonight. All right, man. It's on to Boston. Let's, Let's go, go. baby. Let's go. Appreciate right, it. Cam Spencer and the Huskies. We'll win it here tonight, 75 to 58. So post-game coverage.